galactic ring of fire has reawakened. Over the past several days, powerful earthquakes and fresh volcanic activity have been recorded from Indonesia to Japan, Chile, and across the Pacific Basin, all part of the same restless tectonic system that circles the planet's largest ocean. This latest sequence began quietly, a few moderate tremors off the coast of Papua New Guinea, followed by a series of deep quakes near the Philippines. But what followed in Japan has drawn the world's attention. On Sunday evening, just after 5 p.m. local time, a magnitude 6.9 earthquake struck off the coast of Iwate Prefecture in northern Japan, the strongest to hit the region in months. The shaking was felt across much of Tohoku. Within minutes, Japan's meteorological agency issued a tsunami advisory, warning of possible waves reaching up to a meter high. Small tsunami waves were observed along several ports. Kuji and Ofunato in Iwate recorded waves of around 20 centimeters. Within hours, the advisory was lifted, but the concern didn't fade. The quake's epicenter, located roughly 60 kilometers offshore and about 16 kilometers deep, lies along one of the most active subduction boundaries in the world, the Japan Trench, where the Pacific Plate dives beneath the North American and Okhotsk plates. No major injuries or damage were reported, and Japan's nuclear power stations, including those in the Tohoku region, showed no abnormalities. Bullet train services were briefly halted due to safety checks, and power outages affected a few northern prefectures, but infrastructure quickly resumed normal operation. Still, this event is part of a much larger pattern. Over the same 48-hour window, Indonesia's Mount Ibu and Mount Luatobi both erupted, sending ash columns thousands of meters into the sky. Across the Pacific, Chile's subduction margin registered a series of tremors near Valparaiso and the southern Andes. The seafloor off Chile, scientists say, has been pulsing with small, rhythmic quakes, a signal often compared to the heartbeat of a stressed tectonic plate. In other words, the Pacific is moving again. Seismologists refer to the Ring of Fire as a chain of about 40,000 kilometers of trenches, volcanoes, and fracture zones, stretching from New Zealand, up through Japan, across Alaska, down the Americas, and back to the South Pacific. Roughly 90% of the world's earthquakes occur along this belt, along with most of the planet's major volcanic eruptions. The Japan Meteorological Agency warned that aftershocks from Sunday's quake could continue throughout the week with the highest likelihood over the next two to three days. Dozens of smaller quakes in the magnitude 4 to 5 range have already followed along the same fault line. Experts emphasize that these are normal adjustments along the subduction interface, but they also serve as a stark reminder of how energy builds silently in these zones. The 2011 Tohoku earthquake, which generated a devastating tsunami and killed nearly 20,000 people, originated on this same trench. That event shifted Japan's coastline by more than two meters and slightly altered Earth's axis. Sunday's quake was not nearly as strong, but it occurred in the same region along the same geological boundary. It demonstrates that the forces responsible for the catastrophic event are still active, still shifting, and still capable of producing large-scale deformation. Across Japan's scientific community, researchers are now examining whether the recent swarm represents a temporary stress release or part of a longer-term cycle of plate interaction. Dr. Kenji Satake of the University of Tokyo explains that when moderate quakes cluster near a locked fault segment, it can indicate that stress is redistributing. In some cases, that relieves pressure. In others, it transfers energy to adjacent sections, potentially setting the stage for larger future movement. For now, data from seafloor pressure sensors and GPS instruments show no major uplift or new deformation. Still, monitoring continues around the clock. Meanwhile, halfway across the Pacific, similar tremors have been recorded along Chile's coast, part of the Nazca Plate's ongoing descent beneath South America. Although unrelated directly in a mechanical sense, these events highlight how global tectonic systems often show simultaneous activity during high-stress cycles. As of today, more than 20 volcanoes around the Ring of Fire are showing some level of elevated activity, from Mount Ulawan in Papua New Guinea to Popocatepetl in Mexico. 
none appear to pose immediate danger to populated areas, but their synchronization underscores the dynamism of Earth's crust this month. For Japan, the key message remains preparedness, not panic. The Meteorological Agency has reiterated its standard guidance. Stay informed through official channels. Know your tsunami evacuation routes. Keep emergency kits and communication devices accessible. Remain cautious over the next week as aftershocks continue. Japan's infrastructure, strict building codes, and early warning networks are designed precisely for this kind of scenario. When the quake struck Sunday, millions of mobile phones across northern Honshu received alerts seconds before the shaking began, a system credited with saving countless lives since its implementation after 2011. Still, every event like this serves as a reminder that the Ring of Fire is never truly quiet. When scientists say the Ring of Fire awakens, it does not mean a single catastrophic event is underway. Rather, it signals that multiple interconnected regions are experiencing simultaneous stress adjustments, from deep mantle movement to crustal strain. These shifts can release vast amounts of energy across the planet's seismic network. Dr. Hiroshi Nakata, a volcanologist at Japan's National Research Institute for Earth Science, notes that this cycle may simply reflect seasonal tectonic modulation. Minor changes in stress caused by ocean tides, atmospheric loading, and even temperature variation. But he adds, when several high-magnitude events occur close in time around the Pacific, we pay attention. Nature often reveals patterns before we understand their cause. Globally, data compiled by the USGS and the European Mediterranean Seismological Center confirm that November 2025 has already seen more M6 plus earthquakes than any month since March 2024. For the public, the takeaway is straightforward. Earth's most active seismic belt is alive and expressing itself again. While the current wave of activity has not caused major damage, scientists will be watching for whether the energy propagates, especially towards the western Pacific's locked megathrusts near Japan, the Kuril Islands, and the Mariana Arc. As one Japanese geophysicist summarized on NHK World, we are not forecasting a larger earthquake, but we are acknowledging that the Ring of Fire is in motion, and when it moves, every coastal nation must be ready. The Ring of Fire, stretching across 25,000 miles, connects some of the world's most densely populated regions. Its awakening is not cause for fear, but for awareness. Japan's quake, Indonesia's eruptions, and Chile's offshore tremors are not isolated, they're signals of a living, breathing planet. In the coming days, agencies across the Pacific will continue to issue real-time updates. Seismic instruments, satellite radar, and undersea sensors will track every pulse, every shift, every sign that the great ring encircling our oceans is stirring again. For now, the Ring of Fire reminds us that beneath our calm skies, the Earth's heart still beats, deep, ancient, and powerful.